Hey, what's up? It's Stephen A. Williams with Making Money on, on with Stephen A. Williams here on YouTube, and let's level up your business five-day challenge. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my three-step process. When you're trying to get your business off the ground, when you're trying to level up your business to take it, you know, to make it bigger, to take it to another level, there's certain things that you still have to have a foundation and like a just a a, a process that you can actually lean back on if things don't work, if you're trying to level up, and then especially if you're trying to get your business off the ground. Because I see a lot of people, when they try to start a business, that they're just scrambling all over the place. And then when you're already kind of have some success in your business, you can kind of get off of that foundation and start spending money in ways that don't benefit your business. I know this personally because I've done it before. And what I've always done is just went right back to the basics of what got my business to the level that it's at. And then I would just kind of make pay more attention on the way that I was trying to scale the business. So this here is my three-step process. This is what I teach uh, business owners how to do. This is what I do for business owners, uh, us as a company. And it's basically just one, two, three steps. Now, based on what type of business you have, there could be a different path that is uh, done right here. Let me see if I got this. Yeah, there, it could be a different path and we'll get into to that in a minute. But the first step, the first step is to have winning ads. Now, there's a lot of people that'll say, well, I run my business by word of mouth. Uh, I get referrals, all of that stuff. I'm just here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. You cannot run your business consistently. You cannot scale your business off of depending on referrals and off of depending on word of mouth. I was looking at uh, some reviews of a restaurant that I went to, my wife and I went to. And I normally don't look at the reviews. My wife will look at the reviews. And, and some people said the food was bad. Some people said the food was good. And so when we ate at the place, it was a nice place. We went in there, we ate, and the food was very good. It was actually better than I even thought it was going to be. So I was always thinking, so when I see that, I'm thinking in my mind, what makes that individual think that the food is bad and what makes another individual believe that the food is good? And what I say is that it's subjective. So do you want someone who is subjectively talking about your business? Because what if someone asked them a question about your business? Like they're trying to refer someone to your business and they ask them a question about how your business is ran or about the way you do things. It could give a total uh, misconception of the way that your process is for your business. It could give a total misconception of the way that you do business or the way that you handle the clients. Their situation could have been totally different than, than the other person's situation, all of that. You don't want to leave that in the hands of people giving referrals. You don't want to give leave that in the hands of people with that word of mouth. What you want to do is you want to be the biggest mouthpiece for your business. If you do what I tell you to do with writing winning ads, no matter what other people say about your business, you're going to always have people who want to do business with you. And then you can just work on making your business better if you get bad reviews or something like that. And basically what it usually comes down to on a bad review is just someone had an attitude clash with either an employee or someone like that. I mean, yeah, some places could have bad food, but... Still to this day, still to this day, the only place that I've ever had bad food from that got me sick was a national restaurant chain. So are we saying that all of the chains are bad or are we saying that something happened at that specific location? So the first thing you got to get good at, you got to get good at this because this is the way that you speak to people about your business is you have to write winning ads. You got to get used to making ads about what your products and services are about. So now if you're just, let's just take, for example, an attorney. If you're an attorney, you do personal injury, you're going to basically focus on your ad to get people to call you about your personal injury services. If you're, let's just say that you are a uh, doctor 
and you want to get new clients. You're in private, you know, you have a private office and uh, you want to get new clients. You're going to basically offer out your services as a general practitioner or maybe you do uh, surgery like where they do the liposuction and or cosmetic type surgery. You're going to advertise and have people either fill out a form or call your office about that service. So you got to get good at doing it. So it is not just about throwing ads out there. A lot of people will try to do ads and then they don't get the response that they want. And they're like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And they'll usually, you know, come, you know, when they, when, when they come to uh, either uh, have us as do their ads for them, or they take my program about learning how to make ads. I tell them what you have to do is you, the easiest way that you can determine if an ad is working or not is by the clicks that you're going to get if you're doing online or if you're doing tele, uh, doing uh, uh, billboards or flyers or TV, radio, it's going to be by the calls that you get. Or if you're, you could also send people to your website, but that's very difficult when you're doing stuff offline. But with your, when you're online, you can do a lot of stuff where you have that connection of seeing an ad, filling out a form, and then going to see what you have to offer with your website. So now I'm not going to get too much into how to write winning ads, but I'm going to tell you how you will know if you have a winning ad. The first thing that you will learn if you have a winning ad is the clicks. If you're running your ad and you look at the uh, the uh, analytics on your ad, you look at the the uh, what is you know you're looking at your ad and you're wondering, okay, is this ad even working? Well, the first way that you can determine if your ad is working is by looking at the clicks. If you have no clicks for your on your ad, you need to immediately change that. I teach people and I tell people, hey, you should know within one day if your ad is working or not. For some uh, for some businesses, you can know within a few hours after your ad is deployed and approved, but you should be getting clicks. Now, depending on what type of ad you're running and depending on how big your market is, that could determine how many clicks and also how much your ad budget is because with the platforms, most of them use an auction type uh, bidding where your ad is going to show, is going to circulate based on what your, your total budget is. And then if you're paying per click, it's going to be based off of the, uh, the amount that you pay per click. But the first thing that you will, un that you need to understand is if you'll know if you have a winning ad, if you have clicks on your ad. Now, if you only have one or two clicks, that's not going to work, but let's just say that you have a hundred dollar budget per day. And let's just say that you're getting you're getting clicks, and let's just say that you get a hundred clicks. So you're actually paying like a dollar a click. Now, I would say that that would be a successful ad. And then you know, there's other things that goes into it based off of what how much your product costs or your service costs to be able to see if you can afford to do that. But just for the purposes of this video, is we just want to see. How can we determine if we have a winning ad? And we determine if we have a winning ad based off of the clicks that you have on the ad. Now, the next step, depending on your business, is leads. This is where people will raise their hand and say, I want to know more about your product or service. If your business, uh, like we spoke about with the attorney, uh, that, that could have two paths to finding out if they're um, if the if they're interested in their product or service, I always focus on unless the business definitely is like a store or something. I focus on getting people to uh, put to generate leads. Even really, really, I even would like to do that with stores. So let's just stick with what I would normally do for clients. What I try to get them to understand on why. The power is is in building a list for your business, regardless of what type of business it is. And I'll go into detail about how we could do that with a store and how we could do that with a product's website. So if you're running your ads, and let's just say for leads, so you got 100 clicks, and let's just say that out of the 100 clicks, you ended up getting 50 leads. So you will know that your that your uh your lead form, the way that you're generating leads is successful. 
because you're generating leads from the ad. So the first thing is you got to solve this problem here by getting clicks. And then the next thing is you want to get leads. You want to generate leads, calls or website or store business. But I'm going to get into detail about why it's not going to just work to send clicks over to your website or to your store. And you got to be very, very, very skilled to make that work. Um, but let's just say that you run your ad, 100 clicks, you got 50 leads from there that, you know, that depending on your type of business, it could, it could be at that level or it might be a little bit lower, but for the purposes of this video, that doesn't matter. This is where you would know that your process to capture information and you would know that these 50 people had to have some level of being very serious about learning about your product or service because they're going to leave their information. People will will normally not want to leave their information unless they're interested. Now, some people may say, well, why do you know, I've, I've done stuff like this before and it didn't work. I got a whole bunch of leads. It wasn't qualified, all of this and that. And I'm just here to tell you, don't cry about stuff like that. People are busy. You're busy. You've probably filled out a form before. But if it's something that you really want, that's the job of the follow-up process to take care of that. That's what I see a lot of people skipping. For one of my businesses, my follow-up process has about 120 days worth of follow-up emails, follow-up text that I have daily blast of emails to people who are interested in that service and they become a lead. And then I also have a backup process of having my sales team also give them a call. So that's where you, you're gonna be at. So you solve this problem, now you have these leads and what most people cry about is they say, well, the, the leads aren't converting, they're not doing this and that, all that, that mess. That's because you don't have a follow-up process in place. So the next thing you need to do is you need to get that follow-up process in place. It, now, in this video, we're not going to go into too much detail about that, but I'm just telling you. If you don't have a follow-up process in place, you're going to fail. You're going to feel like all of this work that you did here and that all of these leads that you're spending money on isn't worth it. It's not worth it to your business. Um, I'm here to tell you that it is worth it to your business. You're just doing something wrong in your follow-up process. And there's several things that you have to pay attention to in that follow-up process. So now, the next the next thing is if, if you have a business that does that is that really needs to just have the calls come in. I'll give you an example of one, junk car buying. I consult with a lot of junk car buying companies and basically the situ this is the situation. This is why you have to, you know, understand your market. You don't, uh, you know, you need to understand your market on how people respond. And if you're, if you're going to work with someone, they definitely need to ask you the question about how your market will respond. Because let me tell you uh, what most companies will end up getting you to do for this example here with the junk car buyers is that they'll try to get people to become leads. They'll try to get people to go to the website. I even talked to a Google rep, <laughs> to a Google rep. And I had told her, Hey, I appreciate what you're telling, uh, you know, what you're kind of advising because they're calling around the customers and saying, hey, you know, they want to make suggestions. And they had made a suggestion with one of my clients that they needed to have people also go to their website. And I said, let me tell you, number one, the reasons why. Like you're just, you know, trying to get Google to be able to make clicks from all these different directions when it's not exactly about that like this google takes the money my clients and myself we spend the money and we know what works and what doesn't work so for a junk car buying business that business is so hot to where when people call they don't want to sit there filling out forms they want to talk to somebody right now so why would you spend the money to send people to become a lead or to your website when they're not going to do that. The majority of the people, 
that call, I'm talking about like 99.9% .9 will hang up the phone if they, if they do not get an answer and they will call the next company that is going to buy a junk car because they want to get rid of that car and they want to get money for that car and they want to get it now. They don't need to go through all of that stuff. So you will actually be messing up the follow-up process. That's what I talked about. You got to understand your business and you have to understand what type of follow-up process will work for your business. Now, and this would be the way that you would judge if this is working. So if you have that two-step process in place, you're getting clicks for your ad. This would be for Google Pay Per Call. The, when they click, it, uh, it calls automatically. The only thing you would need to do is to say, okay, how many clicks did we pay for? How many calls did we get? And how many how many cars did we buy? It would be that easy, that three-step process. You get that down pat which we'll get into this later, but I'm going to talk about that with the sales. But that three-step process would help that junk car business be able to make a ton of money if they just stayed with that and they just keep leveling up with that uh, example that I just gave you. Now, if you have a website, let's just say you have a website that you um, sell products on, I would advise you to still build a list, and I'm going to tell you why it's important. Because if you build a list, you're going to be able to remarket back to the people who are interested in the types of products that you sell on your website. So I would say, taking my advice, someone who has a lot uh, more experience than most people that do this type of work, is that you would want to uh, uh, build a list of people who are interested in the products or services that you have on your website. And what I would do is I would break it down. I would have different ads for different products because people want to be specific online about what they like. They don't want to just go to a website and be like, you just got this huge selection. Trust me, those companies that do that, they have billions, millions, maybe even billions of dollars to spend on marketing. And you don't. What you want to do is you want to be specific, generate leads for people who are interested in a certain product on your website, and then what you do is you send them back with your follow-up process to that, and then you can introduce them to other products or services that you have on your website. For a store, what you would do is you would run your ads, and my wife is very, very good at this, very good at this. You would run ads for, for specific items, and she actually does this without having to run a sale. Like, she just knows how to bring people in from from uh, advertisements on Facebook and to get them to come into the store in the way that she marks to see if the ad is working is number one, the people who respond here with the clicks and then and also with the engagement and then the people who come to the store and they mention what, what or that specific product that was going to be, uh, you know, that, that was shown in the ad. And a lot of times she doesn't even have to put it on sale. So she knows that the ad is working. It's generating a certain amount of business. And then when they get into the store, you're trying to, you know, wanting them to, uh, you want people to get to increase their ticket. So they may come for one item, but they end up getting three, four, five, six items. You never know what they're going to do. Now, the next step that we got to go into, and I have had to work with my clients on this because a lot of clients are not salespeople. They know their business, but they're not salespeople. And I always tell people that you're in the advertising and sales business until that person buys your product or service. You're actually bringing them in, uh, uh, telling them about your product or service, or they're looking online, looking to look at your, at your product or service, they're being sold on that. And then when they get to experience your product or service, that's when they're actually your customer. Before that, all they are are a prospect and you are presenting and selling to them. And you have to do it in a compelling way that, that makes you different than the competition that's out there. So when it gets to converting people to sell, this is where a lot of people break down because they get upset because they say, okay, I spent the money over here. I got the leads over here, but it doesn't, they're not converting the sales. Depending on what type of business you have, you're going to have to understand that you're going to have to have some sort of follow-up process in place. If you're only getting your, uh, getting your sales, your, your leads in 
by cause, you're going to have to have something in place to be able to see if people are doing it the right way. One of the ways that I utilize is I have call tracking software for my clients. I have call tracking software for my company, and I will actually listen to the calls and I will say, hey, for me, I will tell my uh, employees, hey, you need to tighten up on that call. I don't like the way that you spoke to that person, or I think that you actually maybe had uh, messed up that sale the way that you were, you know, going back and forth, that it just didn't seem like the call was going the way that, it, that, that you were trained to have it go. Uh, and then with my clients, we really started to find that with the ones that were just using the paper call, we would get, we would track their calls, number one, to make sure to give them proof that they're, that they're getting more than just the clicks, that they're actually getting calls. We would record the calls, and we started finding out that a lot of their employees were answering the phone unprofessional. So what we had to do, like that, that could ruin the whole process. That could ruin the whole process. Imagine if you pay money for clicks, you actually get someone to call and they don't convert and you listen to the message and it was because your employee was not talking to them the right way that they had an attitude or they wasn't listening to them, they wasn't answering questions, they were just trying to rush the sale, whatever it was. That is what we found out. So you gotta, you have to fix this. If you fix this part here, you're gonna do a great job over here. You're gonna make sales. So depending on what type of business you have, that's where you're going to end up uh, making your sales, depending on what type of business. Now, let's talk about businesses that are service businesses that do not have to talk to someone. Then you need to put in the work to make a sales page. As, as a matter of fact, for every business that utilizes their website that gets leads and, and, and wants to make this follow-up process, I tell all of them that you need to have a sales page. The sales page is like a salesperson explaining your product or service, like pre-selling them. Like, hey, yeah, we're going to be giving you a call, but please take a look at our website to t check out what we've done for our other customers, to check out what we could do for you, to look at our process, all of that stuff. This is something that I learned a long time ago, and there's other ways, uh, There, there is a way that you can find out how people are reacting to your, your site. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but there are actual tools that will help you know if your uh, sales page is doing good other than people buying. Like if, if people buy, you know your sales page is working. You know it's working. But some of the times there may be some adjustments and it's always gonna be some adjustments before you get to that sales page that will get people to just buy, especially if you have a website type business online store and you're trying to figure out, well, what is what is missing? Why I have what they want? Why aren't they buying? There's tools, uh, tools, online tools that you could utilize to see how long people are staying on your website. When I started using those tools and I started making adjustments, I, at first I would see people come to my website for three to five seconds, and that's the average that time that people stay on the website. After I started doing that and fixing my sales page. People will stay on my, my sales page for seven and 20 minutes. And I know that they're reading the information or absorbing what we can do for them. They're looking at, I could even see that they're going to the testimonial page. I can see every page that they're going to. And so I knew that when I did that, I had a sales page that could convert. And then the end result was that people ended up signing up for that particular business that I own for the services without even talking to a sales rep. So that's like me having a whole nother employee that's doing everything that I told it to do uh, without an attitude, 24 seven, making sales for my business while I sleep. So if you're interested in learning how to do this process, there's a link above or below this video where I show you in detail how you can generate leads and sales, phone calls, store visits, website visits, I'm going to show you step by step by step how you can do it if you want to learn how to do it. I show you how to do it on every platform, including TikTok, including Instagram, Facebook, Google, Google Pay Per Call, Bing. I'm going to show you all of it. I'm going to show you systems that you could use to communicate with your potential customers all the different types of ways that you can put a follow-up process in place. I'm going to show you exactly 
how to write a winning ad. I'm gonna give you examples of my winning ads. I have one ad that has ran on Facebook for uh, it since 2013. And it's what we're, for, so for 10 years straight, now going on 14 years straight, I have an ad that has ran on Facebook and it has never got the warning that, it, that it's, it's exhausted. Facebook has this little uh, warning thing that says your ad is exhausted. I've never got that warning on that. And that ad generates leads day after day after day. I run it all the time, even during the holidays. I never turn that ad off. So I'm going to teach you how to write winning ads. I'm going to teach you how to generate leads. I'm going to show you what platform works the best for your type of business. I'm going to show you how to convert your leads into sales. So there's a link either above or below this video. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams uh, with uh, Making Money with Stephen A. Williams here on YouTube. And let's level up your business five-day challenge.